Wow, those crickets are loud. Quiet, I'm recording. What's going on, friends? I really want to show you all of the things that I have made lately because there's a lot of them and also I really want to show off because I'm very proud of what I've made. I have been sewing a lot these last few months because basically anytime I get sad, I spend the day at my sewing machine. But I wanted to share them anyway as inspiration for your own sewing projects and obviously for validation. <laughs> okay, let's begin. First off, I finally made pattern weights. I've only been wanting to make these for like three years now. I've always had one project or another that's more important than making pattern weights, but I've finally done it. I just used this old thrifted Ikea cushion cover for these, which had this cool, funky, painted blue, pink, and black and white effect across it. And just by like cutting that out randomly, I've ended up with some really cute looking pattern weights. Then I filled them up with a combination of heavier and denser fabric scraps and five cent coins and marbles. I can't believe I didn't make these earlier because they're really freaking useful. I no longer have to run around my house to try and find slightly heavy things to put on top of my patterns, which are of all random heights, and then I have to put them all back. These just stay on my sewing table and they're very good for cutting out fabrics. <laughs> so I've been focusing on making some pajamas recently because I've been spending a lot of my time wearing pajamas so why not wear something cute like this. I just finished this the other night I was all fired up after watching Next in Fashion like yeah I'm a fashion designer I can sew really quickly too. So I actually whipped this up in one night although I really should have gone to bed I stayed up way too late making this. This is upcycled from a pajama top that was slightly baggier and had sleeves. Instead, I made it slightly more closer fitting. And what I did was to use this dress to cut out a new top, piece it back together, and then put lace detailings around the neck and add straps. I also made this two piece set from scratch. I drafted this from a crop top that I owned. And the leggings, I drafted them off a pair of jeans, skinny jeans that I own, and then just cropped the leg a bit shorter. I'm pretty much wearing these every single day when these aren't in the wash. They're really comfy, they're really cute. Uh, the pants accidentally come up to just under my boobs. I made the waistline a little bit too high, but I also have a short torso, so I often end up doing that when I make high-waisted things. But I left them as is with the real Harry High Pants look because I did make this a little bit too cropped and this tends to ride up a little bit, so having super high pants means my stomach doesn't get cold, which is kind of nice. Look, you probably couldn't sell pajama pants that come right up to here in stores, but they work for me. So as you may have noticed recently, I've been really into late 30s, 40s, and early 50s style. So I've been making a lot of clothes from around that era. The top I tried out recently is this Butterick pattern from I think it's from 1940 something. Now, for those of you who've been following along on my wedding dress journey, you'll know that the 1930s instructions were very sparse and required a lot of previous sewing knowledge. The ones from the 40s, or maybe it's just a Butterick thing, are a lot better. These instructions were so much more clear than the wedding dress ones, thank goodness. And I made this cute little top. It's super crushed right now, but um, you saw me wearing it at the end of this video here. That's what it looks like. Okay, I actually made this at the end of last year, but I don't think I ever showed it on camera. This is a little crop top I made for the summer just passed. But the fabric is a little bit too modish, like kind of 1960s style for my taste right now. So I'm just gonna put that one away for maybe, I'll look, I'll probably have a 60s revival in a few years. Let's be honest, I've been 80s, now I've gone to 40s. That's gotta be next, right? Okay, these ones I'm really excited to show you. I have a few long sleeve turtlenecks in my collection and decided I wanted a couple more for winter. So this was the kind of like mock-up first one that I made, but it actually turned out really wearable. It's really cute. Oh, you know what? I totally lied. This was my first, first attempt at the long sleeve top and I gave up halfway through because this fabric ended up a lot less stretchy than I thought it was. I can barely even fit my forearm through the sleeve. Scrap fabric. And then after a few minor adjustments, I made up this. So obviously I um, changed the sleeve pattern for this one a bit. All I did was slash and spread the straight arm sleeve from the previous top and I got this gorgeous balloon sleeve. Oh, it might be more of a bishop sleeve. Honestly, I don't really know the distinction between those two. Maybe balloon is when it's a little bit more puffy up here. People who know more about fashion, is this a bishop or balloon sleeve? Anyway, that doesn't matter. It's so, Cute. This is my probably my favorite thing that I have 
ever made. This fabric as well, I got really cheap secondhand from Reverse Garbage in Sydney. And it's so nice. Okay, close up. It's this gorgeous semi-sheer stretchy polka dot fabric. Oh, and it's just, it's really cozy and comfortable. Like this is an extremely comfortable yet fashionable looking top. And I'm very, very, very proud of myself. Pretty much like every time I put it on, I start dancing. Cause sleeves like this, you can't not dance in them. Ad break. Here we are again to tell you about Squarespace. Luchi? Where am I? Welcome to the Squarespace. It is a space in which everything is squares. Wait, I'm meant to be helping Annika film an ad for the website Squarespace. But you're saying this is the Squarespace? Indeed it is. And now you are safe. Here, have some wine. Thanks. Oh, of course, they're just squares. Yeah, square stuff is kind of our whole thing. What about that though? That's a squirkle. Come, my friend, let me teach you all about the Squarespace. The Squarespace is a place where your creative visions can come to life. Except stay out of that corner, it's 90 degrees. What is a creative idea that you've had recently that you have wanted to get started on but have never just fully believed? Well, I really wanted to make a website for this idea I had about a ride sharing service where all the drivers would be dressed as Adam Driver. It's called Adam Driver's Drivers. Incredible idea. And it is done. Come, look. Wait, that's my idea. It does look more professional. That is what we do here in the Squarespace. Also, I just used an award-winning template. It's really quite easy. Huh, just like that. In the Squarespace, getting your creative idea off the ground is as easy as a snap of one's fingers. In fact, now I've set up a page for podcasting with audio blocks. Well, I've actually wanted to do my own podcast for ages. I've just sent out an email campaign to all of your contacts, letting them know about the new podcast. Uh, this is kind of awkward, but... You want to see who clicked on your link, don't you? Traffic overview. Ah, oh, wow, you've got 57 views already. That was easy. Wait. I'm not just going to steal my idea, right? Of course not. You own all the content on your Squarespace creation. Wow, thanks. All right, don't get all triangle on me. It is our pleasure, friend. And if you would ever like to visit the Squarespace again, here is the key. Thanks. Oh, it's just a square. Hey, what's red in the square? An uncool tomato. <laughs> Oh, thank God, Luciano, you're back. Okay, we've got to get started on this ad. Um, we're really late posting the video. No need. I think we've already got it. What? Make your creative dreams come true. Go to squarespace.com squarespace. for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, she is the key. Head to squarespace.com slash Annika for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. What you, what are you doing? We're meant to do that part last. What are you? All space is square. Square space. Squarespace. And that concludes the weirdest ad I've ever done. But do go check out Squarespace and a thank you to them for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Can I do one more time? <laughs> you are a butternut. <laughs> what is this ad? It is an amazing Squarespace we did it ever. ad. It's a wrap everyone, we did it. We made the stupidest Squarespace ad ever. We now return you to your regular programming. I also made this cape and I adore it. The pattern is free as well if you go to Vera Venus. I'll pop the link in the description below. So I made it out of this gorgeous like suede velvet material. I'm not entirely sure what I would call it. And believe it or not, this was actually my first time ever doing a collar. I've always been really scared of them. And I was like, okay, it's time to learn. I don't think I did it right, but it looks like a collar. It works, it's fine. So, so cute. I often like wearing it over this. Obviously not including the microphone, that's the speaking into for the video. This was actually just um, the first mock-up of this pattern, which is why I didn't sew it very well. Like I definitely should have used black thread when you're up close, it does look a little bit janky. Nonetheless, I've been wearing it heaps because it's just really eye-catching. I will probably try to remake it in this fabric, but 
Also, maybe this is fine. I don't really mind that the stitching looks all that janky because most people see it on the computer where you can't tell. I also made a matching one, which I can't for the life of me find anywhere in my house, but it looks like this. You can probably see I've been having a bit of a stretchy fabric renaissance right now, and I have gotten back into laundry making in a big way. I really want to make myself nice vintage inspired underwear. So far, I have only made two pairs of undies. I'm going to do something really strange now. I'm going to show you these worn over jeans because I don't want you to see my whole butt. This was the mock-up one, which ended up wearable, so win. This second pair of undies turned out really nice. It has this cheeky little cutout on the back, which is why I'm wearing jeans underneath. And oh my God, they look really bad and weird worn over jeans. And this really isn't giving you an accurate impression of them at all. Oh well. I also started on making a matching bralette and I'm up to this. Hi, I forgot about it when I was filming yesterday, but I did make a few more things that I want to show you. So I made my own uh, crochet 1940 snoots 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 here's number three they are super duper useful for someone who um has trouble with energy and doesn't want to shower too much um when my hair gets greasy basically on um, when i'm like on day four or five hair i'm able to extend the life of it for a couple of days and have it still look cute and vintagey by throwing my hair up into one of these and just doing something cute with my front bangs here. If I can find the tutorial I use to help me make these, it will be in the description. I also made these cute shorts, which I can't find anywhere. I think they went away with my summer clothes. Anyway, that used this pattern here. Okay, here's some things I have made that aren't clothes. <laughs> I've actually been working on this one for about a year because I crochet very slowly, but it's finally finished and it I'm in love with it. These colors really inspired my wedding dress. I am definitely not doing a full on tutorial on this because of it taking me a whole year to make and I don't want to make up another one anytime soon. I'll explain what I did and if you're, you know, good enough at crochet, you can probably figure it out. So I made lots of these six petal crochet flowers and I got the tutorial from someone called Bella Coco Crochet and I'll put the link for that flower tutorial in the description box. I pieced them all together, sewed them together. And then um, I thrifted these handles from a vintage store a couple of years ago. And basically I crocheted this burgundy color from this way down. So I crocheted it a few times around this first, worked it down ways and then joined it up to the bag. Then I made a lining for it out of this gorgeous thrifted fabric. I love it. It is the handbag of my dreams. And when I used to go outside, I would take this with me all the time. Here's a couple of things I've made for the house that I haven't shown you. <laughs> I'm struggling here because this cushion is very heavy. <laughs> I made it as a cushion for um, some wooden seats we have in our courtyard. And it looks all patchwork because I used, <laughs> sorry, it's too heavy. I just used these sample pieces that were from like a sofa sample book. They look really cute patchwork together though. So I've been on a bit of a cushion making spree. I made these two in my last video and then I made two more square ones in this gorgeous velvet. And then I also used this fabric to make a lampshade. And this one, it was actually really quick to make. I whipped it up in about half an hour, which is just a little pot cozy for this fake plant. I thought the silver was a little bit bright for it. So I wrapped it up and now it's all snugly and also hangs off the wall. And lastly, here's a few things that I'm not gonna talk about at length because I didn't make them from scratch. I just upcycled them and they were very basic upcycles too, but very effective. So I'm gonna show you. So this pair of shorts and this pair of shorts were originally both, I think this one was a pair of school pants and this was just another pair of tailored slacks. Basically, I really wanted some cute high-waisted tailored looking shorts and they're kind of hard to find. Most shorts that I can find like new um, are denim shorts and just a really different style from this. But this is a more vintage style of shorts and I was able to get two pairs of them by cutting up some honestly not super flattering work pants. And then finally we have this sweater here. Now this was also a really basic upcycle, but it worked really well. I've been really loving the look of like sweater girls from the early 1950s who wore these super cute short armed sweaters, often in pastel colors or with really cool prints. And there are so many um, of these cute sweater patterns out there, but just for knitting and I can't knit. So I cut the sleeves off the sweater, cut off the original cuffs and then sewed them back onto the short sleeves. It was really easy to do. Things that I'm really looking forward to making in the next little while, I've got a little list, are some nice 
um, comfortable elasticated lounge pants, a garter belt and a bralette to match those gingham underwear and a shawl. I also want you all to tell me which of these you'd most like to see turned into tutorials. I'm going to give you some options because I definitely don't want to tutorialize every single one of them. So please choose what you'd most like to see tutorialized out of these. This cutout t-shirt is high neck topped with a straight sleeve and bishop sleeves, basic square cushions, including patchwork cushions, this style of two-piece set pajamas, and velvet lampshade. I've actually already filmed the footage for that, so um, I'll probably make that anyway. But it'd be nice to know if you wanted to see other things first. That about does it. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video, which will be the final installment of the wedding dress series. It's been a very big editing project. I've had just so much footage to go through, but I've made it super fun and I'm really excited to share it with you all. So I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching. It was nice to have you here. Bye. What projects are you all working on right now or have recently finished? Let me know in the comments and let's all inspire each other. Stay safe out there, everyone.